You know, when I started in the modeling agent, um, industry, I think I got rejected by about uh, five agencies before one took a gamble on me. Wow. Welcome back to another episode of the Black Excellence Series. Today we are sitting here with Maps and he is going to share his journey of entrepreneurship with us. Maps, how are you doing? Good and you? I'm good, thanks. Are you ready to get right into it? I'm ready to get right into it. Yeah. Okay, let's go. So the first question is, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? What do you do? Um, so my name is Maseho Mabunyani, um, then known as Maps Mabunyani, and I'm originally from uh, Protea North in Soweto, to where I grew up in South Johannesburg. I'm a TV presenter, um, actor, creative consultant, writer, film producer. Um, I, yeah, I work in fashion, media, entertainment um, across the board um, in kind of different facets of what I just met, uh, mentioned right now. And then I'm also in entrepreneurship, so um, food retail, like this is like funds out, and a couple of things within the tech space and the, and the financial space as well. What led you down the path of becoming a media personality? It was a mistake actually. A um, mistake. If we specifically focus on that. Yeah, so when I was in um, in my final year in high school, um, in matric, um, my dad's company got liquidated and my mom um, had unfortunately been employed for a couple of years. And we were faced with a couple of challenges um, that then needed us to, um, well, that then needed me to kind of innovate as much as possible or come up with a way of being able to um, make money, save money, and, um, you know, spend for myself, essentially. Right. You know? My parents sacrificed so much to send me to the schools that they sent me to, and they, they'd done their job, done their end of the bargain, and they were like, cool, you're on your own now. See what you can do to keep yourself um, going. And, um, I wanted to be able to save money to, to go to varsity, so I took a gap year in my initial year and I worked quite a bit. And how I got into the media industry was because um, when I had just finished the um, trick, as I mentioned, the following year in that gap year in January, my school sports master mm -hmm. had found out about this audition for a schoolboy rugby show. And um, they were looking for you know someone who they felt would be uh, perhaps like dynamic and love sports and uh, yeah. be able to speak in front of the camera and be able to kind of like carry a show. And it's something I'd never done before. But he's like, oh, there was this kid who has just matriculated, and I think he'd be your guy. Mm -hmm. And I went for the audition, and um, I think I had the audition the next day after I found out about it when he called me, and I did the audition and I got the job and that got me started on, on television. From that point, one thing led to another and managed to get quite a lot of experience across the industry in different ways. Mm -hmm. And now, now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something that I believe in, which is when you are meant to be somewhere, yeah. you will find yourself there, whether it is intentionally or someone recommends you for a job that you yeah. had no intention of ever doing, yeah. but you will find yourself there because that is Fate, that is destiny. However, then it is up to you to give it your best. Absolutely. To work hard, yeah. to learn, and to take over. 100%. Yeah. I mean, with, with me, there's absolutely no doubt that it was all serendipitous to have ended up, um, you know, even starting out within the industry. Because I, I thought, okay, cool. I, I, love, I love people, I love sports, I love talking, I love television. I think maybe I could do this thing. Yeah. Um, and so it's. It's also about like meeting that perhaps moment of like preparation um, in different ways of like knowing who you are and then how when opportunity meets that, taking that opportunity with both hands and making the most of it. And right. I've always been that person who, if I'm in that position now and I've got this opportunity, I'm going to make the most of it and I'm going to make sure that I do it as well as I can and I'm going to do it damn good, otherwise there's no point in doing it at all. Yeah. And so right. I think that's always something that's like very, very important to keep in mind that like, um, never kind of like half half ass the effort that you put into something yes. and and that will always put you in good stead. Um, and ensure that like whatever it is that you're actually after, always ensure that you're prepared. Because it's while you're doing the preparation that as soon as the opportunity comes, you can absolutely um, take advantage of it and, and set yourself up. What is something you wish you knew about your line of work 
before you started it. So I want two sides of this answer. Okay. I want a side of the media side and I also want a side of the business. Okay. Yeah. Um, something I wish I knew before I started in the media side um, was that it was cutthroat. Mm. And not everyone is going to be your friend, not everyone is going to be kind, not um, everyone is going to give you or treat you in the way that you deserve um, or feel you deserve. You must make sure that you earn every little bit and even when you get to that point, it's still going to be cutthroat. Mm. Um, and that, you know, literally nothing about it is easy. It will be a challenge. You will have um, a lot of great difficulties trying to put yourself out there, climb that ladder, whatever it might be. Right. If I just um, knew before, I'd be able to prep my mind for, mm. because I always see the best in people. And that's a lot of time as much to my detriment because yeah. it's, it's easy to get taken advantage of, it's easy to be fooled. It's, it's important to just know that you're going to need a lot of thick skin and a lot of persistence and perseverance and understanding and not take things to heart, but keep kind of like um, knocking at those doors without also then being despondent about um, your own future uh, because things aren't going your way. From the entrepreneurship business side, um, it's definitely the fact that it's it's not what it seems like when you work for yourself. It's like raising a, a, a baby when you, when you start a business. It's raising a child, right? So it's this baby that is going to be um, giving you sleepless nights because it's constantly crying. Yeah. Um, it constantly needs to be supported, constantly needs to be um, fed, so given what it needs to kind of keep going. Yeah. It constantly needs the right people um, looking after it so that it's given that love and attention. You're going to be working around the clock. There aren't set hours, in fact. Like when you're, in, when you're an entrepreneur, the fact that you need to be prepared to almost work 24 hours mm -hmm. non-stop if you really, really are passionate about what you're doing and want to get it to that next level. Right. The goal at the end of the day, just like raising a child, is to get it to that point with the business yeah. that you can step away from it and you can take care of itself. Right. Right? And yeah. that's the dream. Yeah. You know, speaking of working 24-7, I had encountered someone before who was like, they want to start their own business because yeah. they don't want to work 9 to 5 and they want to work when they feel like working. Yeah. And I was like, that's not what business is like. You're not going to work exactly. nine to five and then you come and then you go home and you don't have to think about yeah. whatever it is. When you run a business, that is 24-7. Yeah. Whether or not you get paid or you make enough money in your business, you need to find a way to pay your employees. Yeah. So it's it's not as simple and as easy as some people would make it out to be. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, I would I would argue that um, it, it can be nine to five business, mm. but um, I would also argue that there's probably guarantee that your business would fail if that's your approach. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. What are some mistakes that you have made in your career and how have you learned from them? So again, media side, business side. Um, I think, I think in the media side, it's, um, and look, a lot of it's going to cross over. I think with media and the business side, I think expecting too much of, of, um, of others mm. to um, kind of feel that they would equally want to support your dream as much as you want to support your dream or would support theirs. Right. Um, to, you know, when you, when you see the best in, in people, it can lead to your detriment a whole lot of time, be it from your employees in the business to um, people you encounter uh, within the media part of things that you work with um, in whatever aspect it might be. Um, when it comes to business, like people are always going to be your challenge. And so I've made those kind of mistakes where I thought that um, if this is my dream, that people are all going to want to jump on board and we're all going to do our absolute best to make it a reality. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're always the one who's going to be you, you and whoever else is like heading up the business mm -hmm. are going to be the ones who always put in the most kind of passion and desire for that. Everyone else there a lot of the time is really just there for, for their paycheck and they'll yeah. try to find also loopholes of increasing that paycheck. So, yeah. You know, to really just always be aware of those kinds of things um, and, and being a whole lot wiser to that. I'm now being privy to it is something that I definitely have made mistakes with and would definitely or have definitely learned from. And I'd say as well from the media side, I don't want just a little bit too much pressure for, for things to happen and turn out your way mm -hmm. and feel that you kind of like deserve and they should have been yours or whatever it might be 
and lamenting that and then as a result not really feeling good enough because why why do I, why if I did that as well as I think I did that yeah. and did I not get that um, gig or job yeah. or whatever or the result that I wanted but it's understanding that um, when it's when it's your time it's your time when it's your season it's your season and you know things happen at the right time for you when you are ready mm. and you just have to be again ready to take that opportunity um, because also when these opportunities come when they come at the right time mm. the opportunities, opportunities can still come at the right time and you not be ready for it. Yes. Right? it's about learning learning how to deal with that pressure because when it gets hot in the kitchen and things start sizzling up as they are now yeah. and you don't know how to deal with that then that's when things start to fall apart now leaning more into the media industry what is something that you think people should know that they don't ordinarily know? Now, when it comes to media, I think everybody glamorizes it and we have an expectation of how you know, media personalities live and what the industry is like, that everything is a dream, it's bliss and glam. But what is something, a harsh reality about the media industry? I think within the media world, the harsh reality is probably the fact that it's not as glamorous as it looks. It's not as shiny as it looks. People are genuinely struggling out there. Like artists are putting in so much work and nothing is yielding for them um, to support themselves the way they'd like to. Um, it's not that if you make it into the media industry that you're immediately going to be a success. And even when you become a success who's got television shows, doesn't mean you'll have enough money also to look after and sustain your lifestyle. There's, there's so much that has to go in, into that. There's so much that has to go your way. And um, you know, there's so much you have to be ready to continue to kind of like make sacrifices for to continue to get to where you're trying to get to. But that, that these things take time, and you have to be prepared to roll with that um, to ensure that you're not immediately disheartened as soon as things you know kind of fall off the wagon, and that you can handle that pressure and that disappointment. As any business, sometimes you have to be putting in more money yeah. than what your business is releasing to you. Hundred percent, yeah. absolutely. If someone today is like, you know what, I really want to be in the media industry, I'm interested in, you know, presenting or modeling, where would you recommend that they start? There's really only one way of dealing with it. Um, if you want to go into those kinds of things, you need to go into um, the internet, go to Google, find out who these uh, modeling agencies are, who the casting directors are, all those kinds of details and get in touch with them. But make sure with that, you're ready to send them a reel or video of you doing your presenting or your acting, a portfolio of your photos of modelings, what you're going after. Like they're going to want that with like different looks, different styles of presenting, all the different types of um, skills you can offer when you do that in front of the camera. Acting, what's your range like? Have all that ready. Go into the internet and, and actually get the contacts of these companies or these uh, agencies and get in touch with them like that. And, a lot of the time, obviously, you might actually not get them um, responding or whatever it might be, but it's all about being persistent as possible. You know, when I started in the modeling agent, um, industry, I think I got rejected by about uh, five agencies before one took a gamble on me. Wow. And Five? Yeah. Mm. And once that happened, I had about four of those five who then realized in about a year's time because as soon as I started taking off things started happening more and more for me about four of those five were trying to see how we could yeah. negotiate and talk again um, and it's really important that you just continue to like back yourself and, and just go 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 mm. if you want to go into something like presenting and acting as well mm -hmm. we have so many great opportunities right now on social media so make the most of social media um, there's there's very little excuse right now to not be seen out there for what you have to offer with how much access social media gives us. So if you want to be a presenter, then you can even start it on your phone. Start that YouTube channel, start that hosting your own show, get yourself um, out there, get the followers, get the numbers and and then put yourself all over the platforms. You know, these things start like spreading like wildfire. Um, and I think that that's like, where people need to also see the opportunity instead of just waiting, folding their arms. Right. Because in the past, remember, you couldn't see people like, you couldn't spot great talents or discover great talents unless people came to you. Yeah. And now you've got the opportunity to promote yourself and everything before even stepping foot into anywhere or getting in touch with anyone True. by purely just backing yourself and your and your talents. And um, yeah, immediately then through self-promo and us all being billboards now, we're all, if, you know, if you have social media, and you are 
active on it and you are out there and people can see your profile and 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 you're you're a billboard you're a personality you're a celebrity of sorts because whatever you do there is under the guise of of, of, of people watching and interacting right. and I think it's uh, important to make use of that to the best of your, of your ability. Very true actually and just having that confidence to put yourself out there mm. and even the discipline you know because when you are putting yourself out there on YouTube on Instagram no one is paying you yeah. and so you need to be able to motivate yourself to continue even when you have two views three yeah. views yeah you know and just be consistent and keep going and again when you are meant to be somewhere yeah. in the right time as you said Absolutely. you will find yourself there however it is up to you to put in the work before during and going forward yeah 100 absolutely so another thing about the media is it can be very temporary yeah today you're up tomorrow you're down yeah how have you grown your portfolio and expanded your territory to ensure that even if you're not booking any gigs within the media, that you are still making an income and still growing yourself in your business. Yeah, I mean, that's a very simple and sort of answer for me. Like I've always, I've never wanted to be left wanting. Mm. Um, and I have a very real fear of being broke. Yeah, no, you know? yeah, no guys. And yeah. so, <laughs> I just I remember a moment when I was um, going for auditions early in my career for certain um, gigs or shows or whatever, and I'd get to some of these auditions and see my idols uh, or people I looked up to coming to the same audition, and I'm like, damn! But you've been around, like we're still coming to the same thing. Right. Like when you start working, you realize that like things trickle in, and you kind of are always like hoping the next thing comes in and you're not in control of that. For me, that that's, it's always been enough to make me uncomfortable to want to get my own thing started. And so I think that's where my curiosity has come in, my curiosity has come into hand and my several interests and um, several um, spaces of knowledge that has allowed me then to be able to tap into all of that and want to expand and diversify my portfolio as much as possible so that I've always got different sources of income. I never want to be in that position where I'm just like, um, please, got more, but like I, I really yeah, would. Yeah. I just, I just need it, and I, I never wanted to be the one that isn't in control of a lot of my um, own destiny. And to a certain extent, like I've, I've wanted to know that whatever happens in one part of my life, I can still be just fine, and in another part, I can still be fine. And right. so that's a, that's a key and the the real secret to the success of of, of diversifying is, is is what it affords you afterwards. But that's also like a luxury point to get to. Like you have to first build up that first thing. And then right. once that's kind of like got some sort of momentum, then you can think about doing other things. But for a lot of people, the challenge first is to break into that first thing before you can even have these other conversations. Also like not, not everyone is an entrepreneur, or not everyone is an entrepreneur. So it's also pretty respectable um, for me when people just want to focus on that one thing and just do that and um, nothing else. But also very real of the country and industry that we live in here and knowing that that's not always going to give you the life that you wish for yourself so it's important to get ahead of the game and try be the one who is giving the opportunities and not always the one that's wanting to be given the opportunity right you know, again with what you're saying i strongly believe that to live is to give yeah that you cannot base your entire business work career on what can I receive? What can I do for myself? But the moment you open up your mind to giving and you say, how can I serve other people? How can I give back? When you invest in your community and in others, it will come back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Maps, we're sitting here, we're doing an interview for the Black Excellence Series. So of course I have to ask you, what is a Black Excellence to you? You know, I think, I think for too long as black people we've been kept in the shadows. Mm. Um, of a lot of actually great world um, successes, things that are um, lauded throughout from, from hundreds of years ago, which actually had black people behind them, right? Um, and then it would be something that would never be recognized because of how we've always been touted um, and positioned in an inferior manner through right. a world that is predominantly through a white gaze. Mm. And black excellence for me more than anything else is like, seeing how even through that we've maintained a great deal of dignity mm -hmm. and so for me it, it ends up being a personal thing of like 
it, it's essentially the pursuit of quiet excellence because that's something we've always done really, really well. The real excellence lies in, in, the, in its quiet pursuit. How you can make things happen non-stop when no one is watching, when no right. one is shouting, when no one is um, kind of um, when, when no one's making a big fuss about it. Mm. You know what are you doing then? And when you can continue to be excellent day in day out and reach an elite standard, a high standard of what you're doing, and no matter how basic it is, for me is is black excellence. What I'm hearing from you is black excellence is within you striving for excellence every single day, regardless of who's clapping, who's watching. And that's, that's sort of like integrity, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Integrity is about what do you do when no one is watching, when no one is clapping, when no one is looking. Mm -hmm. And that is excellence. Mm -hmm. Integrity, excellence. I love Absolutely. that. So the last question we have for today is, what advice do you have for someone who would like to find themselves in your shoes, whether it's uh, in business or entrepreneurship, media, what advice do you have? I mean, when it comes to food retail, especially with the way things are right now, it's very hard to not be kind of candid and say, don't do it. Um, but, you know, if, if, you, if you have great kind of aspirations to um, enter into any of these industries, um, I'd say put in a lot of that work that we, well, that I aforementioned, that, that we spoke about a little bit earlier around um, ensuring that you do the research that is done, make sure that you're always prepared, uh, make sure that you're ready for any of those opportunities um, to be able to take them with both hands as soon as they present themselves and more than anything else while you're doing all of that ensure that you're patient both with yourself and everything that is out of your control right you know if you get frustrated that's when you can start to veer away from the things that you really are looking to to do because um, you feel like your time is not going to come it's not going to be um, the, the opportunity is not going to present itself where you can honestly possibly excel um, or reach that goal or achieve what you want to but I think with a great deal of that patience um, and, and understanding and doing the basics really really well um, you can you can pretty much achieve anything I think for me like there's no such thing as impossible. It just takes longer than planned. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of like understand that concept at its real core of that, if you feel like something's never gonna happen, it's gonna be impossible, and you just really knock yourself every single time, if you can get it into your head that some, sometimes things just take a whole lot longer than planned and that your, mm -hmm. your, your kind of time is coming if you are persistent with it, then you can make great things happen for you, you know? I, I always used to hear people say, when I was a kid, I always used to hear people say, and they still say it now, um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I've always inherently had a problem with that. Mm. And so I've always asked myself, how do I challenge that then? It's the fact that if you're willing to put in the work with what you do, if you're passionate about what you do and you have that love and you're willing to do whatever it takes to do what you're doing and you just kind of are working at it every single day, mm. then you flip that whole nation of, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right. and to becoming the person that the who you know wants to know because you're so damn good at it, and so mm -hmm. they can't ignore you. And I think that that's where a lot of power lies. So guys, there you have it. There's been a lot of good advice within this video. And I hope that as you're watching this, that you are inspired, that you've learned a lot, and that you will get up after you've subscribed and liked <laughs> this video, and go out and chase your dreams. Max, thank you so much for sitting with us today. Thank you very much, and good luck with the show. Thank you. Hi, this is Max Mapunyani, a TV presenter, media personality, and business entrepreneur. And you are watching the Black Excellence series with Benita Denya.